interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hello, this is a special report on aviation fuel uh, and its environmental impacts. Airplanes emit uh, particles and gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides, and black carbon when they burn aviation fuel, and these interact with themselves and the atmosphere. Industrial distillation typically happens in a large vertical column known as a distillation tower. These towers can have diameter diameters ranging from 65 centimeters to 6 meters and height ranges from 6 meters to more than 60. The towers have outlets at intervals up the column which for, allow for extraction of the different oil products produced. These oil products have different boiling points so by increasing the temperature of the product inside the columns the different hydrocarbons are separated. The lightest products, those with the lowest boiling point, exit from the top of the columns and the heaviest products, those with the highest boiling point, exit from the bottom of the column. To talk more about the refinery pro process, we turn to our lead scientist, Andres Rodriguez. If we examine this graph, we can see that in the middle of the spectrum is kerosene. Kerosene isn't a gas or a solid, making it easy to transport as fuel. It is not extremely volatile, but it also ignites fairly easily. Kerosene is lighter than the rest of the fuels, making it a good choice for aviation fuel. Fascinating. So how does aviation fuel get to the plane? Aviation fuel generally arrives at the airport via pipeline systems, such as the CEPS. It is then pumped over and dispensed from a tanker or a bowser. The fuel is then driven up to parked aircraft and helicopters. Some airports have pumps similar to filling stations to which aircraft must taxi. Some airports have permanent piping to parking areas for large aircrafts. Air As you can tell from this image of our structural formula, kerosene is made up of carbons and hydrogens. This means that the molecule is nonpolar, making the intermolecular force of kerosene dispersion. And here are the negative environmental impacts, hydrocarbons and fuel. Hydrocarbons containing between 6 and 10 carbon molecules are the top components of most fuels, regardless of whether they are alkanes, alkenes, or sisalic. In general, these molecules are burned to produce energy. Burning hydrocarbons requires oxygen. The hydrocarbon and oxygen combine in a process called combustion to produce water, carbon dioxide, and energy. Of course, these molecules are not the only products of the combustion of hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons that are contaminated with atoms such as sulfur and nitrogen will also produce nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Because hydrocarbons are composed purely of carbon and hydrogen, their combustion with oxygen can only produce water as a result of the combination between hydrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide as a result of the combination of carbon and oxygen. The energy produced by burning a hydrocarbon comes from breaking both carbon-hydrogen and carbon-carbon bonds and recombining them into carbon-oxygen and hydrogen-oxygen bonds. Because an unsaturated hydrocarbon has fewer hydrogen-carbon bonds, it has less hydrogen per molecule than a similar unsaturated hydrocarbon and will produce more carbon dioxide. This also means unsaturated hydrocarbons produce less energy than burned than do saturated hydrocarbons. In order to gain the same amount of energy, a greater quantity of unsaturated hydrocarbon must be burned and as a result more carbon dioxide is created in the process. Thus, Unsaturated hydrocarbons are less environmentally friendly than saturated car hydrocarbons. Beyond the release of carbon dioxide, burning hydrocarbons also releases other contaminants into the atmosphere. Because refining hydrocarbons is not perfect process, all fuels will contain some le level of containments. During combustion, sulfur combines with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide later combines with hydrogen in the atmosphere to produce the weak sulfurous acid as well as the strong sulfuric acid. Both of these contribute to acid rain. In addition to sulfur, nitrogen is also a common containment in hydrocarbons. High nitrogen dioxide can react with hydrogen in the atmosphere to produce nitric acid which also contributes to acid rain.